Hello guys, welcome to another video where we are going to be labbing and in this video we are going to secure the data plan and the data plan is sometimes known as the user plan, the forward plan, the carry plan, or the bearer plan and it's the part of the network that carries the user traffic. So what we're going to do is we are going to secure the user traffic that is sent between two routers and we are going to be using a IPsec tunnel, a site-to-site -site VPN IPsec tunnel. And the way that it works is it creates two phases. Phase one um, is the one where you have to tell what protocols we're going to be using. Like for hashing, we are going to be using, be using SHA for um, integrity, data integrity. We're going to be hash it and we're going to use a protocol of hash for confidentiality, we are going to be using AES for encryption. We are going to encrypt it with AES. And the authentication method that we are going to be using is going to be a pre-share key. And then for phase two, um, the phase two, we are going to tell them which like protocols we are going to be using for each one of them. Like I said, for encryption, it's going to be AES. For hash, it's going to be SHA. And the authentication method is going to be SHA. And the group number that we're going to be using is going to be group number D300 and 2. And then we have to give it the lifetime and also um, the encryption. Um, you could either use DES, 3DES, or AES. For better security, we're going to use the highest, which is AES 256. So let's go ahead and start with this lab. And as you can see right here, um, what I'm saying is that recently my company acquire this company over here and what I want to do is I want to have a site-to-site -site VPN connection between these two um, sites um, through the internet using IPsec um, protocol so let's go ahead and do that I want to launch the two routers and these two routers are going to be sharing uh, we are going to configure network um, the network time protocol and we are also going to perform a SNMP version 3 that's going to be running on this Windows 10 machine. So um, I want to move this like this so you guys can see it better when I'm doing the commands and you can also see what I'm configuring and the IP addresses that I'm configuring. So let's put it like this so you guys could see it better because I want to have the command line over here. And I have not configured anything on, uh, on any other routers. So let's start with the host name. This one is going to be um, LCH1. That's what I'm going to call it. And let's configure the interfaces. Gigabit, uh, let's see, gigabit 0, 0, 0, which is this one right here. It's going to have an IP address of 30.1.1.1. Slash 24. Let's just give it a no shutdown over here. Um, oh, this one is going to have actually. Let's just go ahead and flip it then, since I configure this over here. So 30 that one that one that one. Or actually, well, I was doing LCH one, so that's fine. Never mind. Let's put it like this. I'm doing this router first. No shutdown, and then let's go ahead into interface gigabit zero one, and this one is going to have an IP address of. Uh, 172 that's 16 that one that one slash 24 now shut down exit let's go ahead to LCH2 which is the other company the company that uh, we recently acquired we're going to say that it's going to be LCH version 2 and over here let's give it a host name LCH2 interface gigabit 00, zero. IP address of 30.1.1.2. I shut down. Interface gigabit 01. IP address of 192.168.2.1. I shut down. So we have configured those interfaces. Now we have to configure the interfaces of the host, or the, which is this one right here, which is a website. 
this one right here, which is a two box, and this two box has FTP. It also has a website, and it has a bunch of other tools that you could use. Uh, so let's configure those IP addresses. For the website, we're going to have an iconfig because it is a Linux device, is how you configure the IP address of 172.16.1.3. And we have to tell it it's going to be a net mask of slash 24. And then you need to add the default route. Uh, default gateway of 172.16.1.1 we should be able to pin our default gateway which is LCH1 so we have connectivity let's go ahead into the toolbox and do the same actually if you could just copy this and just edit that should be a lot faster this one needs to be a 2 and the default gateway should be the same. Now we should be able to pin the default gateway. So we have connectivity between these two um, servers that we're running. Let's go ahead into the Windows device, which is on LCH2. Um, and we are going to go ahead into open the networks change network adapter options properties IP before and it has been configured already so I don't have to do that so since it has been configured we should be able to ping the default gateway and let's see if we're able to ping I cannot ping that so from the routers um, <clears throat> LCH 1 and 2 I want to create a default gateway IP route for LCH 2 we want to go to 30.1.1.1 and LCH 1 we want to add a default gateway as well so any traffic that I don't know where to Send it. I want to send it to 30. The one, the one that two. Now, if we go to the Windows device and we try to pin again, we should be able to get that pit replies. And also, if we pick number two, which is the toolbox, and if we pick number three, which is the the website, now we have now we're able to do that. There we go. So that is great. It is working. The way we wanted it so now let's go ahead and configure that uh, let's go ahead and secure that data plane um, before I can configure anything else like SNMP and also access to the website so before we can do that we want to allow um, we want to encrypt that the data plane so let's go ahead and from LCH1 which is this one right here let's go ahead and configure that um, IPsec site to site and the first thing that you need to do is you need to create an access list and this access list is going to be an extended access list and we're going to call it 2 LCH2 because it's going to go from LCH1 to LCH2 that's what I want to name it and I want to permit an IP of the source walker mass and the destination walk our mass exit and then <clears throat> let's go ahead and create that um, the transform set and the transform set is when you configure the phase one of the IPsec or the site to site VPN connection and the way they do that you want to do a crypto <clears throat> crypto and then after that you want to do a crypto IPsec transform set we're going to call it strong and we are going to give it an authentication of ESP and the um, the hash is going to be SHA with HMAC ESP and the encryption is going to be 256 AES256 and the mode is going to be tunnel mode exit and then after that you want to create a crypto map 
and the crypto map what it's going to do is it's going to combine the transform set um, it's going to attach that transform set the peer IP address and also the access list that we just created so let's go ahead and do that crypto map and we're going to call this LCH one two LCH two okay and after you do that you want to do a sequence number one and then you want to do an IPsec using ISKMP and then let's go ahead and set the transform set which was set to strong then we want to set the peer IP address which is the IP address of LCH2 which is 30.1.1.2 and then you want to do the match address and we want to match it to an access list which we name to LCH2 okay so that's done after we do that we want to create a crypto key and the way that you do this crypto ISKMP um, key and the key is going to be Cisco123 that's what I want to um, set it up to and that is the pre-share key and we wanted to match it to the um, or, or you, we want to send it to 30.1.1.2 there we go and then after that you want to create a policy crypto ISKMP let's see what's going on interface qubit input hmm I don't know why it said that but let's go ahead and keep continuing um, crypto as can be policy and the policy is going to be one and the authentication method that we're going to be using is going to be the pre-share key the encryption is AES 256 the hash I'm um, just going to be SHA the group number it's going to be the Hyman group number two and the lifetime is going to be the maximum in seconds 86400 exit after that we want to go into gigabit 00 and we want to add the crypto map and the crypto map that we created we call it LCH1 to LCH2 and that has been completed now let's go ahead and do the same for LCH2 the first thing was a IP access list extended this one's going to be called 2 LCH1 because we're now creating it from LCH2 router 2 to LCH1 okay and then you want to permit IP address of the source 192.168.2.0 while car mass 255 the source is 172.16. 1.0 okay so then after that we need to go ahead and create that crypto IPsec transform set is how it is let me see crypto yep IPsec did I I crypto there we go IPsec transform set we're gonna set it to strong and we want to do the authentication and the hashing the hashing is SHA and we're going to be using combination of HMAC and SHA and then the ESP authentication is going to be ES256 and all this needs to match the same as LCH1 so crypto IPsec transform set strong and the mode that we set up on the other side was tunnel mode exit now let's go ahead and create a crypto map and this map is going to be called LCH2 to LCH1 it's going to be an IPsec or is it let me see um, we first need to give it the sequence number and then IPsec ISKMP and we need to set the peer which was 30.1.1.1 which is the peer IP address of LCH1 which is our peer right because we want to 
or my peer relationship between these two um, routers. And then we want to set the transform set, which is set to strong. And then the we're going to match the address and we're going to match that access list that we created. Done. Then after that, you need to create a crypto. Um, ISKMP key Cisco123, the same password. This is a pre share key that we're going to be using. <clears throat> And then after that, we need to match to the address of 30.1.1.1. And then we want to create a crypto as game P policy one. The authentication that we're going to be using is a pre share key. The encryption is AES256. The hash is a SHA. And the group, the full human group is number two. And the lifetime is the maximum, which is 86400. Now we need to go ahead and, and add the map to gigabit 00. So crypto map and it was um, LCH2 2 LCH1 does not a 6 LCH. What was the crypto map that we created? Let's go ahead. LCH2 to LCH1 LC. Oh, I put LHC. That's why crypto map. Let's go ahead and paste to this one. Exit. So now it should be working. And if you do a debug, um, if you do a debug to um, crypto engine packet, whenever we send traffic over this network. Uh, we should see that it is encrypted. So let's go ahead and bring up the Windows device and let's ping that 172 network. And it should come up encrypted. One seventy two that sixteen. And there you go. We are sending the packets over, and as you can see, the data is being protected because it is being encrypted and decrypted as well. And if you do a, if you want to see, you can do a show. Um, you do a show, crypto IPsec SA, and you can see how many packets we have sent. So we sent three packets, and the the three packets were encrypted and there you go right here and we also decrypted three packets that came back for the reply so if we send four packets one two three and four and if you do a show crypto ipsec sa you're going to see that it went up to seven now so we encrypted seven packets and we decrypted seven packets coming back so now since we have protected that um since we have that protection, we have protected the data. Um, what you could do is now, um, since, like I said, since everything is encrypted now, what we could do is, and we could go ahead and configure everything we want. And the first thing that we want to configure is going to be a network time protocol. Um, and that the way that you could do this, let's go ahead and do a clock zone or actually I think you gotta do it from the enable mode so clock zone no still not recognized also oh, clock time zone okay so it's not from the enable it's from the config T do a clock time zone and you want to do it to EST EST and it's going to be negative five there we go and then after that, you want to go ahead and exit out of here, and you want to create, you want to set the the time. So if you want to do it, if you do a show clock, you're going to see the time. It is saying that it is. It is saying we have the correct time over here, 2049. Yeah, 2049, and all that is good. So we don't need to set the clock. So what you could do is, you're going to go to config T, and you want to do an NTP. 
master because this one is going to be the master or it's, it's not MPT it's MTP master this one is going to be the master so it's going to be the MTP server that we have that we are going to configure and then we're going to do an MTP max associations and I want to configure five max associations so I don't want more than five routers to get um, to get the time from this router that's what I'm telling it and then you do a NTP source and the source is going to be gigabit zero zero and so that I'm saying that whoever um, requests time from this router I wanted to I want to just come from gigabit zero zero. If it comes from gigabit zero one, they are going to reject that um, traffic. And then let's go ahead and do an NTP authenticate, and that turns NTP on. The that turns the NTP authentication on, and then after that you can do an NTP authentication key. So we are going to set up an authentication key. And we are going to be using key number one, and we are going to um, we are going to hash that with MD5, and the key is going to be Cisco one two three. Okay, and then we want to do NTP trust the key, and I want to trust key number one, so I want to just use key number one to be trusted. If key, if we configure key number two, um, it's not going to work. So key number one, and then we're going to do NTP peer, and the peer is going to be 30.1.1.1, which is LCH1. Um, and then we are going to tell it to use key number one. That is done. Let's go ahead and also exit. And if we, let's go ahead and do, um, change the time, do a clock set. And I want to set the time to be, I want it to be, let's just say 11 a.m., 11, 17 a.m. And I want it to be June 20th, or let's just say July 20th of 2019. There we go. If we do a show clock, it's going to show me that the clock that it is 11 a.m. So that is great. Now let's go ahead into LCH1. Let's go ahead and end it. And as you can see, let's see if it's going to keep sending packets. So it's not sending packets. So that's good. Let's go ahead into config T. And from here, what you want to do is you want to go and tell it that the NTP server is 30.1.1.2 which is this LCH2 um, and then after that you want to do an NTP authenticate and then NTP authentication using key 1 and the 5 and the password is Cisco123 done um, and that should do it um, for all of it. And if we do an end, show NTP associations, you're going to see right here that we have a we have configured because it has this one right here. So it is configured and it is coming from 30.1.1.2, and the reference clock is 127.127.1. And there it is. So it has been configured. Let's do a show clock and see what time is it, what time it is. And as you can see, this one says it is Saturday, July 20th of 2019. But it is not, the, cl the clock has not synced. So NTP is not synced. NTP takes about 5 to 15 minutes to be configured. So what we could do is we can move on and we can configure um, SNMP version 3. So let's go ahead and do that from LCH1. Config T. And let's go ahead and do an SNMP. 
this SNMP server. And we're going to say we're going to create a view and we're going to call it all. And after we do that, view all, we're going to do an ISLA, ISLA included. And then let's go ahead and do an SNMP server again. And we're going to create a group and we're going to call it monitor in all caps. We're going to use version 3. We're going to use privilege. Enter. And then we're going to go ahead again. SNMP server. Um, the username is going to be Oscar. And we're going to use a group monitor version 3 authentication we're going to be using SHA and we are going to be called Cisco123 for the password that we're going to be using then we're going to do a um, private that we're going to encrypt it with AES256 it's going to be Cisco123 enter so that has been configured so let's go ahead and copy uh, everything we did so copy this right here so we can configure LCH2 server view all was that the first one that we configure yeah, so it was okay. It was server view O I O S included, and then after we do that, yep, that's how it is. Then we configure this group, and after we configure that group, we did this last command, and I'm just going to um, type it in SNMP server. And the username was Oscar. The group is monitor. Version 3, authentication. Going to use in SHA, Cisco123. Private is going to be AES to encrypt it. Using AES256, Cisco123. Enter. So now, since that has been configured, now we can go to the Windows device, which is the one running the SNMP server. So let's go ahead and open it. Let's go ahead and remove these two agents that we had previously added. Um, looks like it's not letting me remove the agents. There we go. So now after those, I, re I removed them because I added it on another um, video that I did. So let's go ahead and add a new agent. Add a new agent. And the IP address for this new agent is going to be, we are going to tell her that it is 30.1.1.2 for LCH2. We're going to be using SNMP version 3. The name, which is the username, was Cisco. The authentication password was Cisco123. And the Encryption password with Cisco123 as well. We use SHA. And for the encryption, we use AES256. Okay. Get request fail. A connection at attempt was fail. So let's go ahead and can we not edit it from here? Interesting. Let's go ahead and just properties and it looks like it's not letting me so let's go ahead and remove it let's go ahead and add it again agent let's go ahead and add 192.168.2.1 let's see if that works um, it's going to be version 3 asker cisco123 cisco123 and we use AES256.
and there you go as you can see now it is working um, we have added the agent of LCH2 and it's using 192.168.2.1 and as you can see the Cisco iOS software so it is working for LCH2 let's see if we are able to add the other agent which is LCH1 um, let's see if that if it's gonna let us do it if the Cisco one two three Cisco one two three there we go it also added and as you can see the name is LCH1 but the other one was LCH2 and you can see the description is the Cisco iOS software running the iOS version 2 uh, iOS V software click OK and as you can see SNMP version 3 is working so we have configured all of that and that's being encrypted as well so if we go to LCH1 um, well all the packets are being encrypted because we created the tunnel between LCH1 and LCH2 so anything that goes through here is going to be encrypted and also from the Windows device let's go ahead and back to the Windows device and we want to um, get access to 172.16.1.3 which is the WordPress website that we have over here we should be able to get into that website and it is encrypted as you can see right here um, LCH2 which we did the debug command and the debug uh, the debug I remember was crypto packet engine that I did and as you can see since I'm accessing this website it is encrypting that website so this is it for this video guys I hope you guys enjoy this video and if you guys did enjoy this video go ahead and follow me on Twitter at CCNA daily tips and also go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one guys bye bye